హలో స్టూడెంట్స్ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ ఐఎమ్ బ్యాక్ విత్ అనదర్ చాప్టర్ మోషన్ ఇన్ ఎ స్ట్రైట్ లైన్ ఐ హోప్ యూ వెంట్ త్రూ ది ప్రీవియస్ చాప్టర్ దట్ ఈస్ యూనిట్స్ అండ్ మెజర్మెంట్స్ ప్రీవియస్ ఇయర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఆఫ్ నీట్ ఎగ్జామినేషన్ టుడే ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు సాల్వ్ మోషన్ ఇన్ ఎ స్ట్రైట్ లైన్ ప్రీవియస్ ఇయర్ క్వశ్చన్ ఇన్ నీట్ ఎగ్జామినేషన్ లెట్స్ గెట్ స్టార్టెడ్ లుక్ ఎట్ క్వశ్చన్ నెంబర్ వన్ so i'll solve numericals based on topic wise because uh, they have given here uh, in this pdf whatever the pdf have, it is being visible here in that pdf we have questions based on concept wise let me solve based on like that only as earlier okay so before getting in uh, before solving uh, each and every question uh, let me explain you or uh, let me give you a brief introduction about this topic okay so this topic is about average velocity and average speed first of all let me explain you what is the meaning of average velocity and average speed the meaning of average velocity is average velocity is equal to total displacement divided by total time what is it total displacement by total time what's the meaning of displacement we know the meaning of displacement just say what is the meaning of displacement displacement is a shortest distance between initial and final position it's a shortest distance between initial and final position okay is it a scalar quantity or a vector quantity displacement is a vector quantity because we are going to represent the direction from initial to final position okay hmm. what about average speed okay is velocity and speed both are same no they are not speed is a scalar quantity velocity is a vector quantity average speed is depends on distance covered by that object here it is defined as total distance covered by the object divided by total time taken by it what is the meaning of distance distance is actual path length so distance is actual path length okay so based on this uh, small definitions itself we can solve all these numericals which came in previous unit based on the concept of average velocity and average speed for that we should know one more formula that is velocity is equal to displacement by time or speed is equal to distance by time and this formula is applicable when acceleration is equal to zero okay if you can understand this point so we can solve numericals let's go ahead what's the first question what is the the very first question they are asking is a particle covers half of its total distance with a speed v1 okay rest of half of distance with a speed v2 okay the average is speed they are asking which formula i have to use do i have to use a, a first formula or a second formula second formula they are asking average speed so they said uh, particle covers half of total distance but they didn't mention total distance then you have to imagine what is the total distance question number 1 solution let me imagine total distance covered by the object is d okay let me represent that distance d so half of the distance in the sense it is going to be d by 2 remaining half of the distance is d by 2 they haven't given this i am just imagining because they said the object is traveling half of the distance right let us say initially object is moving with a velocity v1 i mean object is moving uh, with a constant speed that is v1 half of the distance okay remaining half of the distance this object is moving with a speed of v2 now they are asking average speed what's the formula for average speed average speed is equal to total 
distance by total time okay so in all these numericals i'm going to use this formula what is the total distance let's say this is point a and this is point b object travel from point a to point b what is the total distance covered ma it is going to be d now total time taken is going to be different because object is moving with the different speeds even though distance of separation is same even though it is moving half of the distance and half of the distance the speeds are different definitely time taken to travel half of the distance is going to be different in both the cases let's say it is going to be t1 and t2 let me represent that t1 and t2 do i know time taken did they give in the question no they haven't given we have to find out what is the formula for time in terms of distance traveled and speed it is going to be distance that is d by 2 d t1 is the time taken to travel first half of the distance that is d by 2 by v1 then what about t2 t2 is d by 2 by v2 let me substitute here so it is going to be d by d by 2 v1 plus d by 2 v2 if you common d it will get cancel out 2 is same in both the denominator so it goes to numerator so it, if you take lcm it is going to be 2 v1 v2 by v1 plus v2 and this is the final answer look at this which option is matching option c is correct guys did you understood hope you understood so whenever you come across average speed or average velocity in numerical the only thing you have to observe what is the total distance or total displacement covered by that object then it is going to be very easy to solve the numerical hope you understand all uh, okay let's move on to next question okay look at the second question in the second question a car moves from x to y with a uniform speed vu okay let me represent it uh, second one solution a car is traveling from x to y with a uniform speed let's say object is at here and it is moving with a uniform speed uniform speed in the sense speed is constant if speed is constant acceleration is going to be zero if acceleration is zero we have only one formula which relates velocity dis displacement time or speed or distance time this is equal. v is equal to d by t remember this is also called as uniform motion right okay initially from x to y object is traveling with a speed v u okay it returns to x with a speed vd okay so first it travels x to y distance then it comes back with how much speed it is coming back it is coming back with a speed vd now what's my question is is object is traveling same distance from x to y and y to x as yes, it is so distance traveled is going to be let's say let me imagine that that is your imagination you have to imagine let's say this is going to be d x to y distance is going to be d then what about y to x distance yes this is also d only because first object traveling from x to y then from y to x that's the reason distance covered by the object is same in both the cases but object is moving with a different speeds or a same speed different speeds if object is moving with a different speeds time taken in by the object to travel from x to y and y to x is it same no it is not same because even though distance covered by that object is the same speeds of those two objects not two objects only one object the speeds of the objects is different that is the reason time taken is also different so same processor what's the question they are asking they are asking the average speed in a round trip we know the formula what's the formula for average speed average speed is total distance by total time what is the total distance x to y it is d then y to x it is t so total speed is sorry total distance is going to be 2d now i need to find out time taken so from x to y it is going to be d by t1 sorry d by v1 that v1 is nothing but vu next step. from y to x it is going to be d by u okay 
वि डि ओके डि विल गेट कैंसल अवट दैन अगेन सेम फार्मुला टू टाइम्स ऑफ वि यु वि डि डिवेडेड बै वि यु प्लस वि डि हॉप यू गॉट इट सर कैन ई रिमेबर दिस फार्मुला इज इट पासीबल कैन ई कैन ई अल्लाई दिस फार्मुला टू आल द न्यूमरिकल्स नो यू आर नाट अलौड टू अल्लाई फॉर आल न्यूमरिकल सो ओनली थिंग दैट यू हेव टू रिमेबर इज डिस्टेंस कवर्ड बै दि आबजेक्ट मस्ट बी सेम but it should move with a different speeds then you can uh, use this formula okay note when i can use this formula if distance object covers equal distances with a different speed if object covers equal distances with different speeds then average speed formula you can use it is as v1 two times of v1 v2 by v1 plus v2 just remember this point average speed is equal to two times of v1 v2 by v1 plus v2 is applicable only if object travels equal distances with the different speeds that's the only point you have to remember okay next third question a car runs at a constant speed on a circular track of radius 100 meter okay a car runs at a constant speed on a circular track hmm, let me consider a circular track What is the radius of that circular track? They have they have already given that radius, which is equal to hundred meter. Okay, object is moving in this circular track. Let let me consider it is moving in anti-clockwise direction. They haven't given whether it is moving in clockwise or anti-clockwise. No problem. Taking sixty two point eight seconds for every circular lap. Super. For every one complete circle, how much time it is taking? T is equal to sixty-two point eight seconds. This is also called as time period. What is the meaning here? Time taken to complete one circular lap. Okay. Next, what's the question they're asking? They're asking average velocity and average speed for each circular lap. Very good. They're asking average velocity and average speed for each circular lap. Okay. The very first thing that we have to remember is what's the formula for average speed and average velocity? Average velocity. I'm representing with a vector notation. Average speed I'm representing with without vector notation. So it is going to be total displacement or distance. It is going to be total displacement divided by total time. What about average speed? Average speed is total distance by total time. Super. Total distance by total time. Now what's the question they're asking? Average velocity and average speed for each circular lap. Let me consider. So let's say object is starting posi at position A. That means it is moving in this path. So when it completes one circular path, what about initial position and final position of the object? Is it at the same position or a different position? This is how it is covered. When it starts moving, by the time it completes one circular path. Initial position and final position of the object is going to be same. If initial position and final position are same, then what is going to be displacement? Displacement is equal to zero. Remember that note. The note is after completion of one circular lap. After completion of one circular lap, initial position and final position both are same. 
if both are same then displacement is equal to zero this is the point you have to remember in this question okay let me explain it next question now what's the thing they are asking they are asking average velocity and average speed is distance is also going to be zero no it is not we have to find out total distance is nothing but total path length of this circuit so now average velocity is equal to displacement is zero by total time taken for one complete circular lap is 62.8 zero by anything is zero meter per second what about average speed average speed is equal to total distance one complete circular lap distance is nothing but circumference of the circle which is equal to 2 pi r divided by time taken time period so 2 into 3.14 into radius is 100 meter divided by 62.8 which is equal to let me multiply uh, 3.14 with 2 you are going to get 6.28 i can write down 6.28 as uh, okay 62.8 into 10 divided by 62.8 so the 62.8 will get cancelled answer is going to be 10 meter per second look at this so which option is matching so first answer is they're asking average velocity average velocity is zero initially that is how we have to answer sir uh, don't misunderstand that it is taking more time just for explaining you i'm taking this much time for answering this question it is very easy see the, look at this question they are asking average velocity first terminology after what distance they are saying after each circular lap this is the key point average velocity each circular lap that means after one circular lap initial position and final position of the objects object is the same that is the reason displacement is zero so answer of for average velocity is going to be zero now first one is average velocity second one is average speed look at the option which is having first one as zero that is going to be the correct option but unfortunately option b and option c in both options first value is zero meter per second but one more thing you have to remember average is average speed is going to be zero is that possible distance can never be zero right if object is not started then distance can be zero but as object is covering some this and as, as object is under motion distance can never be zero so that's the reason average speed is not equal to zero so you can go for third option so that is how you can think without solving all these things hope you understood okay let me explain you our next question so what is the question a car moves a distance of 200 meter it covers first half of the distance at a speed of 40 km per hour okay question number four solution what is the total distance covered by that object total distance it is covering is 200 meter first cover it covers the first half of the distance at a speed of 40 km per hour okay For first it is traveling with 40 km per hour so what is the total distance it is covering 100 meter okay let us see about next remaining distance remaining distance is going to be 100 meter the second half of the distance at a speed v okay now second half of the distance is at a speed v now the average speed is oh they have already given average speed average speed is 48 kilometer per hour value of v they are asking okay so what's the formula for average speed guys average speed just now i have already given a hint what is the hint here if object covers equal distances here it is if object covers equal distances with different speeds then average speed formula is 2 v1 v2 by v1 plus v2 so you just remember this formula 
that condition you have to remember where you have to check out whether object is covering equal distances or different distances now here object is traveling first half of the distance the second half of the distance in the sense object is covering equal distances but with a different velocity then average velocity is going to be 2 v1 v2 by v1 plus v2 you can apply this formula blindly if distance covered is the same but with a different velocities they have already given average speed what's the value that is 48 kilometer per hour i'm not substituting uh, units of this quantity because all of them are in kilometer per hour only no need to substitute so 2 into v1 is going to be 40 v2 is v divided by 40 plus v now this is what we have to solve let me solve this 4 1s are 4 2s are 2 6 are okay 10 4 tens are 4 twelves are you are going to get 48 then 2 1s are 2 6 are so final a you are going to get 40 into 6 plus 6 v is equal to 10 v then 40 into 6 is equal to 10 minus 4 into v so 4 tens are then v is equal to 60 kilometer per hour I hope this is the answer. Check out whether option is matching or not. Yes. So you can observe one more thing. Uh, I mean, that is a trick here. So most of the students, what they used to do is, they'll cal calculate this immediately. 40 into 60. Sorry, 6 to 40. And again, they'll uh, look for a calculation. That is a completely nonsense thing. Don't go ahead with that so here i didn't cancel for uh, i didn't calculated 14 to 6 so that i can easily can calculate the answer later final calculations it will be very easy for me see for example if you write the same thing as 240 plus 6v is equal to 10v so then 4v is equal to 240 then you can get the answer here also 60 kilometer per hour this is also the way to answering so instead of this this is the easiest way for me see, because of we are going to solve numericals a lot of numericals we are going to solve in physics that is the reason when you are calculating just check out this kind of calculation because we can save the time right just because neat examination is completely about timing okay it's not about what do you call how much knowledge you have you have you should be in a position to answer the question in a very less time that is what they are going to check out okay look at this question question number five okay a bus traveling the first one-third distance at a speed of 10 km per hour okay they said object is traveling first one-third but they didn't mention whether object is or total distance covered by that object hope you are able to understand they said object covers object uh, traveling the first one third distance they didn't mention what is the total distance if you know the total distance it is very very easy to calculate first one third of the total distance but they didn't mention then you have to imagine okay let me imagine total distance is going to be let's say d so why are you taking d in all the cases that's your wish you can take any other variable also there is nothing wrong what is the initial velocity of the object with which it is moving it is going to be 10 kilometer per hour this is only up to first one third first one third in the sense one by third of total distance total distance i assumed as d okay next one third next one third at 20 kilometer per hour okay next one third at 20 kilometer per hour super so it is traveling d by third next one third in the sense again d by three distance next so last one third they have already given that last one third is at 60 kilometer per hour very good so this is going to be remaining one third distance hope you understood the representation 
now what's the question they're asking they're asking average speed okay average speed formula v average is equal to don't write down 2v1 v2 by v1 plus v2 formula here even though object is traveling equal distances we have three different values of velocities so that's why we cannot use 2v1 v2 by v1 plus v2 that's a different way so v1 v2 by v1 plus v2 into 2 is applicable for the two different velocities for three different velocities we have a different approach no need to remember the formulas always just remember the process what's the formula for average speed total distance covered by the object divided by total time that's all this time is going to be same in all the three cases no it is not going to be so it is going to take a different time let's say t1 t2 t3 that's what i have to substitute let me substitute that so total distance is d time taken is to t1 plus t2 plus t3 as they haven't given any information about acceleration and objects are moving with a constant speed in the particular duration then i can say that we have only one formula if acceleration is equal to zero that is v is equal to d by t just remember this is the formula we are going to use so here it is d by first one third d by 3 by 10 next one third d by 3 by 20 next one third d by 3 divided by 60 d will get cancelled out and 3 goes to numerator so final answer is going to be 3 divided by 1 by 10 plus 1 by 20 plus 1 by 30 sorry 1 by 60 here also you have to find out lcm and then you have to answer let me make it easy so the thing i used to approach so i used to follow is i'll make denominators as equal then i'll go ahead then it is going to be very easy for me to answer it so let me make the denominator as same so here i have to multiply with 6 divided with 6 here it is multiply with 3 divided with 3 so right now if you write like this so denominators of all these fractions is going to be same now the process is going to be very easy 3 by 6 by 60 plus 3 by 20 plus 1 by 60 which is equal to 3 by 10 divided by as bases are same as bases are same numerators can be directly added that is 10 by 60 0 0 will get cancelled 6 goes to numerator then average speed in this case is going to be 18 kilometer per hour this is the way to answer this kind of question okay now sixth question a car covers the first half of the distance between two places at 40 km per hour, another half at 60 km per hour. Now, it is of same model. Already we have solved this. I think question number 4. Question number 4 and question number 6 are of same model. They said a car covers first half of the distance between two places with 40 km per hour remaining half with 60 km per hour that means object is traveling equal distances or different distances it is traveling equal distances as it is traveling equal distances i can directly answer so on the object well, speed should be different if object speed is different then i can answer directly that is going to be 2 times of v1 v2 by v1 plus v2 question number 4 and question number 6 both are same 4 and 6 both are same so it is equal to 2 times of v1 is how much 40 v2 is 60 divided by 40 plus 60 it is going to be 2 into 40 into 60 divided by 100 zeros will get cancelled uh, 6 4s and 24 2s. Answer is going to be 48 kilometer per hour. Check out which option matches here. Option B. For question number 6, option B is correct. Hope you understood. Very good. Now look at this uh, next concept. The next concept is based on 
instantaneous velocity and speed this concept is based on instantaneous velocity and speed what's the meaning of instantaneous velocity that's what we have to observe average speed is equal to total distance covered by the object by total time when it comes to average velocity total displacement covered by the object divided by time that is a total value what about okay <clears throat> So next concept is instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speed. The meaning of instantaneous velocity is velocity at the particular instant of time. Velocity instantaneous. So it means velocity at particular instant of time. and it is found by using differentiating the position of the particle let's say velocity instantaneous velocity formula is equal to dx by dt we have to differentiate position of the particle with respect to time then we are going and we have to substitute uh, at part what what particular time they are asking the velocity then we are going to get instantaneous velocity okay we have a formula for differentiation for different values we have different formulas now the very uh, the best formula that we are going to use so almost uh, so many nine times okay that formula is d x power n by dx which is equal to n into x power n minus 1 dx power n by dx is equal to n into x power n minus 1 this is the formula we are going to use so many times in motion in a straight line and motion in a plane chapter also remaining chapters also but major numericals okay look at this let's say dt power 4 by dt is there okay you may get confused if i take t here let me take uh, dx power 4 by dx which is equal to in place of n 4 is there so 4 into x power 4 minus 1 then you are going to get 4 into x power 3 next dx power minus 4 by dx let us see in place of n what's the value here minus 4 minus 4 x power minus 4 minus 1 you are going to get Minus four x power minus five. Try to understand the difference between these two. If I have d x power four by d x, that means this power value comes as a multiplier. That is four, and this power value is reduced by one. Four x power three. If it is positive value of power, if it is a negative value of power, that is d x power minus four by d x, then again this power comes as a multiplier that is minus 4 and its power is increased by 1 that is x power minus 5 try to understand the difference if it is positive power then it is decreases by 1 if it is a negative power it is increases by 1 that i am talking about magnitude sign will be like that only there is no any change in sign okay and one more thing the students used to get confuse a lot it is dx by dx if how to if dx by dx is there so you have to imagine x power 1 will be there so it is going to be 1 into x power 1 minus 1 so it is going to be x power 0 which is equal to 1 let's solve numericals based on instantaneous velocity and speed Look at question number seven. Two cars P and Q starts from same point at the same time in a straight line, and their positions are represented by x P and x Q. Okay, two cars P and Q are moving in a same directions. Okay, starts from same point. in a straight line and their positions are represented they have given 
position of the partic first car and position of the second car variation with respect to time they have given which is equal to at plus b t square what about x cube of t with respect to time that is f t minus t square okay at what time do the cars have same velocity look at the last in line of the question at what time that means they are asking time at this time what is happening cars are having same velocity velocity of the car p is equal to velocity of the car q to find out velocity what should we have to differentiate position with respect to time that is dx p by dt which is equal to dx q by dt differentiate them see whatever the last line they have given i just followed blindly so i need a time at what time when velocities are equal okay so differentiate xp with respect to time what you are going to get differentiation of at is going to be a bt square i've already explained how to differentiate it is going to be uh, 2 bt which is equal to next f minus t square differentiation 2t okay you you just go through this if power 4 is there power 4 comes as a multiplier and power decreases by 1 power as a negative then power increases by minus y if power is 1 uh, then it is going to be 1 as an answer that's what i have followed now from this i need a time that's what they are asking so here it is send this 2t left side and a right side 2b t plus 2t which is equal to f minus a common t here t is equal to f minus a divided by t common 2b plus 2 so common b also f minus a divided by 2 1 plus p which option is correct i think option 4 matches correct question number 7 yes it is next question number 8 so question number 8 is also a little of same model if the velocity of a particle is v is equal to okay eight solution v is equal to at plus bt square velocity of the particle is varying with respect to time okay where a and b are constants okay the distance traveled by the by it between 1 second to 2 second super so we know the formula for velocity v is equal to dx by dt right now what they are doing is they have given velocity and they are asking x i'll write i'll, I'll write a note here if x is given then velocity is equal to dx by dt the given position you have to differentiate with respect to time one more point if v is given then x is equal to integral v dt that is from t1 to t2 x is equal to integral t1 to t2 v dt so this is the process if x versus time uh, equation is given finding velocity is nothing but we have to differentiate that position if v versus time is given equation then to find out a displacement or a distance we have to integrate velocity with respect to the time remember this process okay now that is what we have to do they have given velocity what they are asking which what should i have to do i have to integrate this equation from where to where i have to integrate they have already given 1 second to 2 second okay then v is equal to dx by dt so from this how i am getting integration in this sense x is equal to see here dx is equal to v into dt to cancel differentiation we have to integrate okay integral dx is going to be x which is equal to integral time 1 second to 2 seconds velocity they have already given at plus bt square into dt so which is equal to a is constant that it 
given in question itself so t integration is going to be t square by 2 limits are from 1 to 2 plus b t square integration is t cube by 3 limits are from 1 to 2 so if you substitute these limits you are going to get a by 2 2 square minus 1 you are going to get 2 square minus 1 you have to substitute upper limit minus lower limit in the variable in plus b by 3 into 2 cube minus 3 okay so which is equal to 2 square minus 1 is going to be 3 you are going to get 3a by 2 plus 2 cube is going to be 8 minus 1 cube right that's not uh, 3 that is going to be 1 cube 1 cube is equal to 1 8 minus 1 you are going to get 7 that is going to be 7b by 3 now, which option is matching i think option a is correct for this okay very good let's move on to the next question next question is also of similar model question number nine the displacement x of a particle mm, so the displacement x of a particle of mass m moving in one dimension under the action of force is related to time by t is equal to root x plus 3 super the given t is equal to root x plus 3 super what's they're asking the displacement of the particle when velocity is 0 super this this line is important so what is the thing they're asking they're asking displacement at what time they are asking when velocity is equal to 0 when in the sense time okay they are asking displacement when velocity is equal to 0 super the very first thing that we have to do is we have to find out uh, this relation with respect to time that means position with respect to time we have to find out then only it is possible to find out velocity okay from this what is root x root x is equal to t minus 3 right from this what about x that means you have to square on both sides if you square on both sides you are going to get x is equal to t minus 3 square expand this x is equal to t square plus 9 minus 6 into t this is the position of the particle okay now that's uh, they are asking displacement of the particle at what time they are asking displacement when velocity is equal to 0 so let me find out velocity so dx by dt will gives us velocity which is equal to t square differentiation is going to be 2t 9 differentiation 9 is a constant so constant differentiation is 0 60 differentiation is minus 6 which is equal to 0 they given in question itself velocity is 0 that's why we equated to 0 so from this t is equal to 3 seconds you are going to get okay at this time we need displacement that means you have to substitute this time whatever you got when velocity is zero at that time you have to substitute in position equation which is equal to x is equal to t square so what is t square t square is uh, 3 square that is 9 plus 9 minus 6 into 3 which is equal to 0 this is the answer hope you understood just check it out the process that i followed was a simple calculation then you should be in a position to answer this one more thing i have to explain you is these numericals also included integration formulas let me give you one integration formula so that is in previous question that is eighth question we used integration right so integral x power n dx is equal to x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 so what is the differentiation formula dx power n by dx is equal to n into x power n minus 1 
but whereas integral integration of x power n is equal to x power n plus 1 by n plus 1 let me give you an example integral x power 4 dx if you have like this then x power 4 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 you have to write down like this so what you are going to get x power 5 divided by 5 now whenever you get x power 4 integration x power 2 integration whatever it may be you have to increase power by 1 the complete power value after increasing you have to keep it as a denominator remember this point let me take this is as x power minus 4 let's see what is going to get so x power minus 4 plus 1 divided by minus 4 plus 1 so you have to decrease power by 1 so initial power i have minus 4 if you decrease you are going to get minus 3 divided by minus 3 try to understand the difference is it clear guys let's move on to the next question question number 10 in question number 10 they have given question uh, with the help of a graph by seeing graph itself don't decide that question is going to be difficult question don't think like that i'll make it easy a particle shows distance time graph okay as given in the figure the maximum instantaneous velocity of the particle around the point okay super they're asking velocity that velocity also should be maximum that's what they are asking i'll give you a note remember this when graphical questions comes i will definitely explain so what is the meaning of velocity when graph is given before that try to understand when position versus time graph is given when position versus position versus time graph is given Finding velocity is nothing but finding velocity is nothing but finding slope of the given equation. Finding slope of the given equation. What is the meaning of slope? given graph slope of the given graph what is the meaning of slope slope is nothing but differentiation okay look at this so along y-axis we have distance along the x-axis we have time then finding velocity is nothing but we have two differences dx by dt this differentiation itself is called as a slope what is the meaning of a slope when graph is given slope is nothing but tan theta understand when graphical questions comes, I will explain you or graphical questions concept itself, I will explain you in a short interval of time. Let me take some time. First of all, I would like to explain the previous year questions. Then later, I will upload whatever the concepts which are there in the content. In straight line chapter, all the chapters, as soon as possible, I will upload them. Okay. So, finding velocity when position versus time graph is given is nothing but finding slope of the given graph slope of the given graph is nothing but tan theta okay look at this graph are they asking velocity or maximum velocity maximum instantaneous velocity at a particular instant of time we need that velocity okay so this is the graph they have given position b position c position d c t b let's say this is here the meaning of uh, slope is tan theta that means we have to check out at which position slope is going to be more let me draw a tangent If you draw a tangents like this, let's say this is theta 1, theta 2 and this is theta 3, uh, it is going to be like this is how it is going to be, some theta 4 like that. If you observe this, in which case, at which position, I am having a very huge value of slope, definitely at point C. Point C, so slope, slope at point C is high 
compared to remaining positions slope at point c is greater comparing to remaining all the points slope is greater in the sense tan theta is greater if tan theta is greater then velocity is greater that is the meaning so at which position velocity is greater ma at position c this is how we have to answer at which position uh, velocity slope is minimum at position a if you observe okay so that is a minimum velocity maximum velocity there is a point where you are going to get zero velocity also that means at the maximum height you are going to get almost zero velocity so position c is correct answer okay let's move on to the next question the next question they have given is this is 10th completed okay question number 11 the position x of a particle with respect to time along x axis is given by x is equal to 9t square minus t cube position versus time they have given where x is in meter and t is in seconds what t is in seconds what will be the position of this particle what will be the position of this particle that means they are asking x at what time when it achieves maximum speed along the positive x direction super when in the sense you you have to remember this that is time at what time it is going to achieve maximum velocity that's what we have to check out so there is a small concept in max that is maximum and minimum so whenever that concept comes you have to differentiate the given equation with respect to variable then you have to equate it to zero then you are going to get the values required okay well, whenever you come across the terminology maximum or minimum you have to differentiate the given equation with respect to variable then you equate it to zero then you are going to get the required answer look at this so first of all i have to find out well as what will be the position of the particle when it achieves maximum speed i should know at what time max speed is going to be maximum first of all i have to find out speed then maximum speed i have to equate it to zero then i am going to get time this is the process this time i have to substitute in position observe guys it will be somewhat tricky the thing is i need position at what time i need position when velocity is maximum what is the meaning of velocity maximum we have to find out diff maximum value that means differentiating the given velocity with respect to time then you have to equal it to zero then you are going to get a time if you substitute this time in position you are going to get the answer let's go ahead this is the procedure remember this now first of all let me find out velocity so v is equal to dx by dt right which is equal to 18t minus 3t square i did explain how to find it out next now i got the velocity now i have to find out the maximum value how to find out maximum maximum in the sense differentiate velocity with respect to variable differentiate velocity with respect to variable what's the variable here time is the variable that is dv by dt which is equated to 0 let me differentiate this velocity again you are going to get 18 minus 60 which is equal to 0 then 18 is equal to 6 into t then t is equal to 3 seconds at 3 seconds i am going to get maximum velocity then you have to substitute this time in the given position which is equal to 9 into 3 square minus 3 cube where 3 square is going to be 9 9 is a 81 minus 27 which is equal to 54 meter this is the answer hope you understood guys next 
a particle moves along a straight line ox okay at a time t seconds the distance x of the particle from o is given by okay a particle moving in a straight okay let me represent that carefully try to understand this i'm taking the help of coordinate axis particle is starting from o it is moving o to x let's say this is x axis and this is y axis it is moving along x axis direction from uh, a particle starts uh, at a time t the distance of the particle from o is given by okay from this position object started moving so for the drive given position equation that is equal to 40 plus 12t minus t cube okay after knowing this equation so what is the question they are asking how long would the particle travel before coming to rest position how long it means x is equal to what when before coming to rest the meaning of rest is velocity is equal to zero at what time velocity is going to become zero this is what i have to find so try to understand i need position i mean how long the particle travel before coming to rest position okay let me explain you this to find out the velocity is equal to oh sorry velocity is equal to zero they have already given to find out velocity i have to differentiate position with respect to time which is equal to dx by dt which is equal to 40 differentiation is 0 12t differentiation is 12 minus 3t square which is you have to make it as 0 because they said before coming to rest in the sense we have to find out how much time for takes that object to come to rest position which is equal to 12 3 is equal to 3t square then t square is equal to 4 then t is equal to 2 seconds actually plus or minus 2 seconds we won't consider negative time time cannot be negative right at this time object comes to rest position let me substitute this time value in the given equation that is x is equal to 40 into 12 into 2 minus 2 cube it is going to be 8 so which is equal 40 plus 12 to the 24 Minus eight. Twenty-four minus eight is going to be twelve. Twelve plus forty, not not twelve. It is going to be sixteen. Sixteen plus forty. It is going to be fifty-six. The answer that I got is fifty-six. Is there any option? Yes, there is an option. Option fifth. Option D is there. But actually, this answer is wrong. why they, this answer is wrong okay this is, answer is actually wrong why it is wrong this x is from origin so whatever the answer that we got it is from origin this because i have added 40 also right 40 plus 12 into 2 minus 2 cube that means i have added 40 also what is 40 here Okay, look at this. Initially, they have given this equation. If you observe this equation, at t is equal to zero, you have to look at initial position of the particle. At t is equal to zero, in the sense you have to substitute t is equal to zero in this equation. Then what I am going to get x is equal to forty. That means object is already at a distance of forty meter from the origin. this is the starting position of the particle so, so from this position object is starting this is the exact meaning of this question whatever the equation they have given this equation represent this terminology object is at initially x is at t is equal to 0 it is at 40 meter from this 40 meter object starts traveling so what is the answer i got finally x is equal to 56 meter This fifty-six meter is measured from starting. Okay, so x value fifty-six meter 
I got from the starting that means from the origin in the given equation I did sub substituted directly right so this is where object came to rest position final velocity is equal to zero now remaining distance is the distance traveled by this object that is equal to 16 meter that is the answer this is not wrong this is wrong answer distance covered by the object before it comes to rest distance covered before it comes to rest which is equal to 16 meter hope you understand so object position is already at 40 meter from 40 meter it started its journey that is the reason before coming into rest position it covers a distance of 16 meter so which option is the correct option option a is the correct option try to understand guys this approach is a slight different okay now let's move on to the next question question number 13 okay the given position with respect to time in a different way displacement x of the particle varies with the time t as shown in the figure okay position x they have given it is as x is equal to a e power minus alpha t plus b e power beta t now where a b alpha and beta are positive constant they are asking velocity of the particle will be okay how to find out velocity when position versus time equation is given velocity is equal to dx by dt which is equal to differentiate this exponential differentiation i'll write down exponential differentiation here d by dx of e power or dt d by dt of e power t is equal to e power t only but d by dt of e power a t is going to be a e power a t remember this formula okay so whatever the power uh, you have time coefficient that will comes as a multiplier that's all remember this process now here it is a e power minus alpha t differentiation is whatever the coefficient we have that co coefficient comes as a multiplier that is minus alpha e power minus alpha t again next plus b coefficient beta e power b into t okay so this is the actual answer v is equal to minus a alpha e power minus alpha t plus b beta e power beta t okay now look at the options what they have given let me explain you one by one b uh, velocity of the particle will be independent of beta is that correct so in this velocity is there any terminology beta s yes, it is it is there s yes, velocity depends on beta so this option is wrong next drop to zero when alpha is equal to beta okay let's check uh, this option it means if alpha is equal to beta you should get velocity is equal to zero that is the meaning of this uh, second option let's check out whether it is going to be zero or not v is equal to you have to replace alpha with beta or beta with alpha that is your choice okay so let's say a let me replace alpha with beta beta e power minus beta into t plus b beta e power beta t is it going to become zero no it is not which is not equal to zero so this this is actually wrong so which option second option is also wrong okay let me check option c and option d go on decreasing with time go on increasing with time first of all uh, let me give you a basic note that is if sorry, a basic formula that is e power 0 is equal to 1 second one 
e power infinity is equal to infinity third one e power minus infinity is equal to zero remember this e power infinity is infinity e power minus infinity is equal to zero remember this three formulas based on this we are going to decide let us say initial case i am taking initially initially uh, that means t is equal to zero at t is equal to zero what is going to be velocity velocity is equal to if you substitute t is equal to zero e power zero is going to be one so this one is also one answer is going to be minus a plus b okay if you substitute t is equal to infinity this is the final position so final then v is equal to minus a alpha e power minus infinity because already minus is there plus b beta e power beta infinity infinity into beta so it is going to be infinity only what is e power infinity value infinity this complete term is going to be infinity what is e uh, infinity plus some value it is going to be infinity only so as we are moving as time is increasing from t is equal to 0 to infinity as time is increasing what is happening to velocity value is it increasing or decreasing increasing this is where third option and uh, fourth option can be cross checked so which option is correct so go on decreasing with time no t is equal to 0 answer is minus a plus b at t is equal to infinity it is infinite that means it is increasing or decreasing increasing option d is correct this is the way to cross check okay now look at this 14th question 14th question model i have already explained that means finding instantaneous velocity of the particle when position versus time graph is nothing but you have to find out slope velocity formula is dx by dt this dx by dt is nothing but slope which is equal to tan theta we have to check out at which position slope is going to be zero positive negative so those kind of things we can easily check out let me uh, explain you that graph so try to understand and respond in parallel so this is the graph they have given okay so this is point d so maximum position point d and this is e this is f and this is c so what's the question this is displacement along y-axis and along x-axis it is going to be time now the question they are asking the instantaneous velocity of the particle is negative at that point negative in the sense of positive slope or a negative slope velocity is negative in the sense slope is going to be negative that means we have to look for the slope where you are going to get it is going to be negative so if you observe at point a if i draw a straight line like this this is the tangent so as time is increasing so velocity is increasing i mean position of the particle is increasing it means this is a positive velocity point nothing but a positive slope this one represent positive slope okay next at position d if i draw a tangent at position d position at position d is the slope is zero slope there is no change in position at exactly position d so slope is going to be zero slope is zero in the sense at that position velocity is equal to zero now observe position e if i draw like this as time is increasing position is decreasing or increasing decreasing displacement is decreasing that means is, is it a negative slope or a positive slope slope is negative okay at position f slope is going to be increasing so it is a positive slope slope is equal to positive now which option matches correctly they are asking position instantaneous velocity at uh, of the particle is negative at which position this is the position where instant instantaneous velocity is going to be negative slope is negative in the sense velocity of the object is negative this is how we have to answer this question hope you understood guys okay, let's answer question number 15 try to observe the question the question graph itself 
Now they're given uh, different graphs of velocity versus time. So in this case, as time is increasing, velocity of the particle is also increasing up to this position. After that, time is increasing, velocity is decreasing. Okay. In the first region, it increases. Second region, it is decreases. Velocity. Time is always increasing or decreasing here. I mean, it is. Is it positive or negative? Positive only. Velocity can be negative or positive. It doesn't matter. Whatever it may be. Okay. Next. If you observe this, uh, look at the option C. Yes. As time is goes on increases, velocity of the particle is goes on increases. Yes, this is. It is possible. That means object is moving only one direction. So if you observe first option. It is like a bike. Up to certain interval of time, you are rising the accelerator, so velocity increases. After that, you are uh, reducing velocity, nothing but deceleration. Velocity decreases and comes to rest position at certain interval of time. That means you are moving in the same direction. Okay. Now, if you observe option C also, as time is increasing, velocity of the object enormously goes on increasing. It means object is moving in a same direction that means it is moving along a straight line see by seeing the graph as a curve you cannot decide that object is moving in a curve okay straight line um, one dimension in the sense object is moving in a same direction that is the meaning of this question okay next if you observe uh, the last option if you observe last option as time is positive it is as it is increasing so once velocity is positive, another time velocity is negative. Yes, it is possible. As time is increasing, object velocity may be positive or negative. Velocity is negative in the sense object is moving in a negative direction. Velocity positive in the sense object is moving in a positive direction. That means object is moving a only in one direction, one dimension at one direction. Either it is in the forward direction or backward direction, positive direction or negative direction like that now if you observe this question option c okay let me take you that region so let's say object is uh, started from here at this position time is let's say t as time is increasing position velocity is decreasing okay as time is further increasing velocity is increased okay as time is further increasing this velocity of the object is it is it is in coming reverse is that possible no it is not possible velocity is increasing here like that you should get velocity variation somewhere else here but you are getting that means uh, after traveling this much distance uh, object is moving that means i have to take in a negative direction is that possible let me represent with respect to positions okay so try to understand guys so position one position 2 position 3 position 4 so first as time increases object travel from position 1 to position 2 if it is further increases it travels from position 2 to position 3 now if it is further traveling it is moving from 3 to 4 so from 3 to 4 duration i should time should be taken from 3 to 4 in a negative direction is negative time possible time is negative is that possible no it is not possible that is the reason second option is correct answer for the given question it is a correct answer actually this is not going to be one dimension is it clear guys hope you understood next concept is acceleration that's our numerical space term acceleration so the meaning of acceleration is uh, change in velocity with respect to time that is a is equal to dv by dt is it a scalar quantity or a vector quantity it is a vector quantity we have two types of accelerations one is average acceleration another one is instantaneous acceleration meaning of average acceleration is delta v by delta t total change in velocity with respect to total time it is represented with v2 minus v1 by t2 minus t1 v2 is nothing but velocity at time t2 v1 is velocity at time t1 instantaneous acceleration is in the sense you have to differentiate velocity 
with respect to time it is velocity at a particular instant of time sometimes they used to give a t is equal to 1 second they may asking acceleration t is equal to 1 second 2 seconds they are asking acceleration such kind of acceleration is nothing but acceleration at a particular instant of time which is also called as instantaneous acceleration let's solve numericals so knowing the concept is okay but we have to apply it right so let me explain you the for very first question a particle of unit mass undergoes one dimensional motion such that its velocity varies according to v of x is equal to theta x power minus 2 and oh they have given question velocity variation with respect to position okay x power minus 2 n and then they are asking the acceleration of the particle as a function of x super so whatever the formula we know is acceleration is equal to dv by dt then now we have to find out acceleration formula in terms of velocity and position let's see a is equal to as a dv by dt okay multiply this equation with dx divide it with dx if you multiply with dx then just observe this one dx by dt can be replaced as velocity right which is equal to v into dv by dx remaining can i replace this acceleration equation like this so acceleration is equal to v into dv by dx this is the formula for acceleration in terms of velocity and position of the particle now let's look into the problem question number 16 solution so they have given velocity of the particle with respect to position now we have to find out acceleration with respect to position now tell me what's the formula for acceleration with respect to position just now given a is equal to v into dv by dx okay so what is v here v is nothing but beta into x power minus 2n d by dx of what's the value of v beta into x power minus 2n okay beta is constant here it comes as a multiply so it is going to be beta square x power minus 2n into differentiation of this x power minus 2n n into x power n minus 1 right so minus 2n x power minus 2n minus 1 this is how we have to understand so look at the option which is matching so minus 2n comes Beside, so it is minus 2n beta square x power minus 2n into x power minus 2n minus 1, which is minus 2n beta square x power minus 2n minus 2n minus 1. As bases are same, as they are in multiplication, we can add powers. That's what we did. So it is minus 2n beta square. x power minus 4n minus 1 so this is the acceleration for the given question so look at the option which option matches option d perfectly matches very good next question number 17 solution so in question number 17 the position of the particle along a straight line is described by an equation they are given position equation with respect to time that is 8 Plus twelve t minus t q, where x is in meter and t is in seconds. They are asking the retardation. Retardation in the sense of negative acceleration of the particle when velocity becomes zero. Super. They are asking retardation when velocity is equal to zero. This is how you have to write. It. First of all, I have to write when velocity is zero. When velocity is zero when velocity is zero in the sense i have to find out time at that time i have to find out acceleration let me find out velocity first v is equal to dx by dt differentiate position equation with respect to time 8 differentiation is zero then 12t differentiation is 12 t cube differentiation is 3t square which is equal to zero that's what they said so acceleration when uh, velocity is equal to zero so 12 is equal to 3t square 
then t is equal to t square is equal to 4 and t is equal to plus or minus 2 we have to consider positive time itself so t is equal to 2 seconds we are going to get velocity 0 at this time we have to find out acceleration first of all find out acceleration acceleration is equal to dv by dt which is equal to so differentiate velocity with respect to time it is going to be minus 6t then acceleration which is negative here the negative acceleration is nothing but a retardation minus is 6 into at what time at time when velocity is equal to 0 which is equal to minus 12 meter per second square so which option matches option d very good next it's a more different question position versus time equation they have given and they are asking options in a different pattern let's say oh they are asking acceleration of the particle is proportional to okay solution x is equal to t plus 5 whole power minus 1 okay mm -hmm. then let me differentiate it with respect to time then i am going to get velocity super velocity is equal to dx by dt earlier i have already explained so dt power minus 1 by dt it is can be written as minus 1 t power minus 1 minus 1 which is equal to minus 1 into t power minus 2 see this power comes as a multiplier and power is increased by 1 if it is a negative power i have already explained just observe this so it is going to be minus 1 t plus 5 whole power minus 2 is a differentiation of the given position with respect to time and then you have to differentiate for whatever you assumed it as x it is going to be d t plus 5 by dt so the thing is it's called as a chain rule first you have to imagine t plus 5 as x x power minus 1 is minus 1 x power minus 2 so whatever you assume as x you have to differentiate it again and you have to keep it as a multiplier for this answer okay now what is the velocity we are going to get so this is going to be 1 so t differentiation is 1 phi differentiation is 0 so final answer we are going to get is minus 1 t plus 5 whole power minus 2 okay let's differentiate again you are going to get velocity sorry you are going to get acceleration the thing, thing they are asking is acceleration a is equal to dv by dt which is equal to so minus 1 is already present again this minus 2 comes as a multiplier minus 1 into minus 2 t plus 5 whole power minus 3 again differentiation of t plus 5 again it is going to be 1 so final answer minus 1 into t plus 5 whole power minus 3 they said acceleration is proportional to they are not asking magnitude it is proportional to t plus 5 whole power minus 3 super but t plus 5 is equal to oh sorry x is equal to t plus 5 whole power minus 1 options are not given in that format they have given in the format velocity power 3 by 2 distance power 2 distance power minus 2 okay so let me cross check with the options look at the first option velocity so acceleration is proportional to velocity power 3 by 2 acceleration proportional to velocity power 3 by 2 so what is the velocity i got velocity is proportional to here it is velocity is proportional to t plus 5 whole power minus 2 let me substitute that if I substitute in this equation, I should get acceleration. Then answer is going to be correct. A proportional to V is T plus 5 whole power minus 2 is the velocity. Whole power 3 by 2 is there. This 2, 2 will get cancelled. So finally, I am going to get acceleration proportional to T plus 5 whole power minus 3. So is this answer matching this? Yes, it is then answer is going to be correct so first option itself is correct okay next you can cross check uh, with the help of remaining equations also use the same procedure you'll get the answer next question number 19 so what the question 
they have given position of the particle oh they have given okay super mm -hmm. a particle is moving along x axis has an acceleration f at a time t so acceleration kurtrikanga sorry they have given acceleration f is equal to f naught into 1 minus t by capital t where f naught and t are constants okay the particle at t is equal to 0 has 0 velocity super this is the thing we have to remember at t is equal to 0 velocity of the particle is 0 in time interval interval t is equal to 0 and the instant when f is equal to 0 instant when f is equal to 0 in the sense i have to find out time at a is equal to 0 not a here that a itself is acceleration right okay so look at this that a itself is acceleration which is must be equal to 0 at that time I have to find out at that uh, acceleration is equal to zero at that moment I have to find out a time I have to find out velocity in this ratio okay super try to understand carefully at t is equal to zero velocity is zero the time interval between t is equal to zero and time value something value instant when f is equal to zero f is acceleration so in this duration we have to find out velocity of the particle super let me equate f is equal to 0 then what we are going to get f naught 1 minus t by t, capital t so f naught also will become 0 1 minus t by t is equal to 0 t by t is equal to 1 then t is equal to capital t this is the time when uh, f is equal to 0 t is equal to capital so this is the time I have to define so acceleration formula is generally dv by dt by giving acceleration with respect to time they are asking velocity then v is equal to integral a dt this is what we have from where to where I have to integrate from 0 to the time at which f is equal to 0 which is equal to capital T so where v is equal to f naught 1 minus t by capital T into dt this is how we have to increase 0 to capital t v is equal to f naught is constant one integration is t minus 1 by capital t t integration is t square by 2 now limits are from 0 to t let me substitute that vf is equal to f naught in place of small t we have to substitute those variables so which is see t minus 1 by t into t square 1 by 2 t will be there it is going to be t square so no need to substitute 0 limit that is going to be 0 itself so t will get cancelled so v is equal to f naught into t minus t by 2 the final answer v is equal to f naught t by 2 is the answer which option is matching option C so this is the way to answer this kind of question okay next one is interesting so question number 20 so what is the thing they are asking they have given position with respect to two tire okay s is equal to 3 t cube plus 7 t square plus 14 t plus 8 meter the value of acceleration okay acceleration of the particle at t is equal to one second so at what time they need acceleration at, at t is equal to one second let me substitute so first of all find out velocity velocity is equal to 9 t square plus 14 t plus 14 next acceleration acceleration in the sense you have to differentiate velocity to find out velocity differentiate position with respect to, to time to find out acceleration differentiate velocity with respect to, to time 
then it is going to be 18t plus 14. Now this is the value of acceleration I got <clears throat> it is which is in terms of t at what value of time they are asking acceleration at t is equal to 1 second substitute that time here then we are going to get value of acceleration a is equal to 18 into 1 plus 14 18 plus 14 it is going to be 32 meter per second square this is the value of acceleration this is how we have to solve next Next question is also of the same procedure. What's the equation they have given? So the position of the particle varies with respect to time as x is equal to a t square minus b t cube super 21. x is equal to a t square minus b t cube. Then they are asking acceleration will be so the acceleration will be 0 at t is equal to super acceleration will be equal to 0 at t is equal to that's what they are asking okay so first of all acceleration is 0 at that moment we have to find out time that is the meaning okay so differentiate position with respect to time you are going to get velocity that is 2 a t minus 3 b t square next Differentiate velocity with respect to time we are going to get acceleration which is 2a minus 6b Now we have to equate it to 0 because they have given in the question itself 6bt we are going to get so from this 2a is equal to 6bt Then t is equal to 2a by 6b which is equal to a by 3b this is the time at which acceleration is equal to 0. Question number 21, option A is correct. Next. Question number 22. 22. So, the acceleration of a particle is increasing linearly with respect to time as Bt. So, they have given acceleration. A is equal to B into T. A is acceleration. B is some constant. The particle starts from origin with an initial velocity v0. Starts from origin in the sense at t is equal to 0, velocity of the particle is v0. Okay. The distance travelled by the particle in time t will be. This question is of a somewhat different model, model comparing to uh, previous questions. Let me answer. At t is equal to 0, what's the velocity of the object? v0. They said acceleration is proportional and the acceleration of the particle is increasing linearly with the time as bt. That means a is proportional to bt. Okay. Super. So to find out uh, velocity, what should we have to do when acceleration is given? Acceleration is equal to dv by dt. Then v is equal to integral a dt. That's what we have to do right whenever they have given acceleration we can find out velocity with the help of integrating that acceleration with respect to time that is v is equal to integral a dt so you are going to get b t square by 2 we don't know so the proportionality that means it is having initial constant c so hope you know the integration formula we used to add plus c right plus c indicates starting position okay so at t is equal to 0 what's the value of uh, velocity v naught this is v at t is equal to 0 c is equal to v naught that is the meaning so here this v itself is represented with v naught clear hope you understood this v is represented with dx by dt right this dx by dt is nothing but Initial velocity v0 at t is equal to 0. Okay, super. So finally, velocity is represented as b t square by 2 plus v0. Understand? Ma? This is dx by dt, b t square by 2 plus c. dx by dt is nothing but velocity. They have already given initial condition. At t is equal to 0, initial velocity of the object is v0. That is the reason this starting velocity, I must consider it as v0. 
Super. So I know velocity equation with respect to time. Then I need to find out the distance traveled by the particle. If v is equal to dx by dt, then how to find out x? X is nothing but integral v dt. That's all. Check out this process. So x is equal to integral v dt. Then x is equal to integral. What's the value of v here? b t square by 2 plus v na b by 2 is constant t square integration is t cube by 3 plus v naught integration is v naught into t so finally it is b t cube divided by 6 plus v naught into t don't get confused here this is b b t cube by 6 plus plus v naught into t. So option C is correct. Very good. Next look at the last question in this concept 23. They gave position equation with respect to two time. Velocity when acceleration is 0. That's what there is. Super. So S is equal to t cube minus 6 t square plus 3 t plus 4. Then what's the question they are asking? Velocity. We need to find out velocity when acceleration is equal to zero. This is the meaning. I don't know velocity and I don't know time. But they have given a hint at acceleration is equal to zero. At acceleration is equal to zero in the sense I have to find out the time at which acceleration is going to become zero. So first of all let me find out velocity. So velocity is found with the help of ds by dt which is equal to 3t square minus 12t plus 3. Next acceleration is dv by dt which is equal to 6t minus 12 which is equated to 0. They said no. So at acceleration is equal to 0. 6t is equal to 12 and t is equal to 2 seconds. This is the time when acceleration is equal to 0. If we substitute this time in the given equation, we are going to get velocity. In velocity equation, we have to substitute. Let me substitute that and observe the equation. So here it is. What is the velocity equation? We got my velocity is equal to 3t square minus 12t plus 3. So 3 into 2 square minus 12 into 2 plus 3. 2 square is 4, 4 3 is a 12 minus 24 plus 3. So what's the final answer we are going to get? 12 plus 3 is going to be or else minus 12 plus 3 is going to be 9. It is going to be minus 9 meter per second. So you must represent negative sign also. So option C is correct. Very good. Wow. Now we are getting into the very very important concept and this is the concept where students are confusing a lot. Well, let me try to give you a clarity on this concept that is kinematic equation. Super. Kinematic equations. So this concept included motion under gravity numericals also kinematic equations for uniformly accelerated motion okay no problem. the meaning of uniformly accelerated motion is acceleration is constant then only these kinematic equations are applicable so here we have four equations what are those four equations tell me one by one so that is v is equal to u plus at v square is equal to u square plus 2a s one more s is equal to u plus sorry ut plus half a t square next s n is equal to u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1 okay so these are the equations this is not 9 don't take as in it is as a 9 it is acceleration okay now the let's learn about this terminology so what about s here this s is 
displacement covered by the object in t seconds so this is where it is it is displacement not distance displacement displacement in t seconds what about sn sn is displacement in nth second so v is final velocity u is initial velocity a is acceleration a is acceleration and i have to mention this point that these four equations are applicable applicable only if acceleration is constant then only these equations are applicable otherwise these four equations are not at all applicable so one more thing i would like to give one shortcut for the numericals based on motion under gravity this concept includes motion under gravity numericals also this concept includes motion under gravity numericals so what is the meaning of motion under gravity that means so a particle is thrown vertically upward or a particle is moving downward so if there is no any external force acting on this object if you throw any object vertical upward it falls down only due to gravity so its velocity comes to zero first then object moves down so that means it is moving only due to gravitational force of attraction that's why the numericals are based on motion under gravity also included in kinematic equation in that case because acceleration due to gravity is going to be constant right that's why these questions are also included in kinematic equations itself so for this i am going to give you a reference direction try to remember this this reference direction i am going to use in this numerical so let's see when object is moving upward uh, velocity and displacement i am going to take as positive time is always positive when object is moving upward acceleration due to gravity is downward so that's the reason a i am going to replace it with minus g a in uh, in equation a i am going to replace a with minus g okay this is when object is moving upward when object is moving downward velocity displacement i am going to take it as a negative as it is moving downward this is a reference so with this reference i am going to solve numericals time is always positive right whether object is moving upward or downward that doesn't matter so time is always positive so when object is moving down in this case also acceleration due to gravity of the object is in the same direction that means downward or upward it is downward only then i am going to consider acceleration due to gravity minus g itself so in kinematic equation we have a right in this equation the term a is there no so in those in the in place of a i am going to substitute minus g when it comes to motion under gravity numericals because whether object is thrown vertically upward or downward doesn't matter a is going to be minus g itself this is what my reference is so based on this uh, this reference i am going to solve numericals i would like to give one more trick so just observe carefully so when object is thrown vertically upward let's say with 40 meter per second what is the direction of acceleration due to gravity ma acceleration due to gravity is downward and it is equal to 10 meter per second square what is the meaning of acceleration due to gravity is opposite to motion of the object in this case velocity decreases or increases velocity decreases what is the reason because acceleration is negative we know that when acceleration is negative velocity of the object decreases decreases by how much that's what we have to understand so acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square in the sense for every 1 second velocity of the object is decreases by 10 meter per second that's the meaning so after 1 second its velocity is 30 meter per second velocity decreases right after one more second it is 20 meter per second after one more second it is going to be 10 meter per second after one more second it is going to be zero so that means 
how much time it is going to take to reach maximum position it is going to take 4 seconds okay so this is the process this is the trick i would like to give no need to use any equations also if you want to use equations i will tell you equation so when uh, so what is the time at which of, uh, object comes to rest position in the sense we use v is equal to u plus at equation right final velocity is 0 initial velocity is 40 a is minus g i told you to take minus you know minus 10 into t then 10 into t is equal to 40 then t is equal to 4 seconds it's a nonsense no need to go through this if i am getting answer with the help of this shortcut for every one second object velocity is going to decreases by magnitude of acceleration if acceleration is opposite to motion of the object okay what about distance traveled in this one second duration you can use this equation s is equal to either ut plus half at square or u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1 doesn't matter now i'll give you one trick just remember that if initial velocity is 40 then distance traveled is by the object in the first second duration is going to be 40 minus acceleration due to gravity by 2 that is going to be 5 so 40 minus half of the acceleration that is that is equal to 35 just remember this okay now if you want me to give proof i will give you the proof so use s is equal to ut plus half at square ut plus half at square and try to answer distance travel in first one second initial velocity is 40 times is 1 minus a is 5 sorry not 5 it is going to be 10 10 by 2 into 1 square so final answer 40 minus 5 which is equal to 35 meter distance covered by the object in the first second is going to be 35 meter instead of that uh, i'm giving you a trick 40 is the initial velocity with which you are throwing minus half of the acceleration 40 initial velocity u minus half of the acceleration will give you the answer that is equal to 35 meter so you can use s is equal to u plus s n is equal to u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1 equation also that is u is the initial velocity what is the initial velocity it is 40 minus a is 10 10 by 2 so this is acceleration not 9 so 10 by 2 2 into 1 minus 1 so you 2 minus 1 1 10 by 2 5 again you are going to get 35 meter try to understand the approach next so next to one second what is going to be the distance covered so as velocity decreases comparing to first to second distance travel also decreases what is the decrease in velocity 10 so decrease in displacement of the object is also by 10 so answer is going to be 25 meter next one second it is going to be 15 meter next to one second it is going to be 5 meter super this is the shortcut that you need to remember after travel reaching to maximum position will the object is going to be at the same position or will it come back it will come back so when it is coming back what is the initial velocity zero now the thing you have to understand what is the direction of acceleration due to gravity while it is coming down acceleration due to gravity direction is the same as well motion of the object then what happens to velocity velocity is going to increase yes, very good after one second what's going to be velocity velocity is increases by magnitude of acceleration what is acceleration due to gravity value 10 meter per second square right after one second velocity is 10 meter per second after one more second it is 20 meter per second next one second it is going to be 30 meter per second next one second it is going to be 40 meter per second when it reaches ground is it reaching with the same velocity with which it is thrown yes it is object reaches ground with velocity of projection if uh, velocity of the projection is 40 meter per second object will hit the ground with the same velocity remember this so distance travel in each one second duration is also going to be the same thing so with the help of these shortcuts we are going to solve the numericals and try to observe carefully hope you understood this guys you just go through these points and terminologies each and every time just go back and try to understand this complete concept again now so in kinematics this concept is very very uh, kinematic equations concept is very very important we have 
so many types of different types of numerical in uh, different uh, chapters you have to interlink with them these kinematic equations are applicable only when acceleration is constant then we can apply this motion under gravity hope you understood if not just go back and uh, just revise this one second then we'll solve numericals let us solve some numericals based on this kinematic equations for uniformly accelerated motion concept okay look at the question number 24 what's they are asking a ball is thrown vertically downward with a velocity of 20 meter per second from the top of a tower okay assume this is a tower from this tower a ball is thrown vertically down with a velocity 20 meter per second it hits the ground after some time with a velocity 80 meter per second super it hits the ground after certain interval of time with 80 meter per second mm -hmm. the height of the tower is they have already given acceleration due to gravity that is yeah. they are asking height of this tower okay let me calculate first of all decide whether object is moving downward or upward object is moving downward right if object is moving downward i have already given some different reference direction do you remember just once revise those two reference directions when object is moving down u s are taken as negative or positive negative super which equation is suitable to find out the answer h here i know initial velocity and final velocity so better use v square is equal to u square plus 2as equation so what is v square v square is going to be final velocity that is 80 square which is equal to what is u square initial velocity that is 20 square what about acceleration acceleration is minus g so 2 into minus 10 because a is equal to minus g and the value of acceleration due to gravity already given in the question itself to s is minus h why i am representing with minus h because object is moving downward so you, i must consider it is in the form of negative only so finally 80 square minus 20 square it is going to be 6400 minus 400 which is equal to 20 into h it is 6000 equal to 20 into h 0 will get cancelled then h is equal to 300 meter got it so this is the way you need to answer hope you understood look at question number 25 guys they are given a stone is uh, falls freely under gravity it covers distances h1 h3 sorry h1 h2 and h3 in first five seconds next to five seconds and next to five seconds respectively i have represented the diagram here just look at that diagram then you can understand they are asking the relation between h1 h2 and h3 okay super so as this object is falling only due to gravity we can use those equations of motion to find out distance traveled by that object in each time so s is equal to ut plus half a t square what is the initial velocity of the object as it is being fall free fall under free fall so initial velocity is going to be zero s is going to be minus h1 r plus h1 it is going to be minus h1 because object is moving downward reference direction a is minus gr plus gr a is going to be minus g that is minus g value let me keep this value as it is it is going to be g by 2 into t square what's the value of t it is going to be 5 so in the first 5 seconds i'm going to find out the answer it is going to be 5 5 square so you are going to get h1 is equal to 25 by 2 into g this is let's say equation one this minus minus will get cancelled i told you why i took minus next 
look at the next to 5 seconds next to 5 seconds it is traveling h2 let me add this total distance what is the total distance from the starting to 10 seconds duration it is going to be h1 plus h2 right so h1 plus h2 so which is equal to uh, use again same equation s is equal to ut plus half a t square initial velocity is 0 s is going to be now minus h1 plus h2 total distance in 10 seconds minus g by 2 into 10 square because it is taking time 10 seconds right so minus minus will get cancelled so h1 plus h2 is equal to 10 square is going to be 100 100 into g divided by 2 now i know the value of h1 let me find out h2 h2 is equal to 100 g by 2 minus h1 so what's the value of h1 h1 is equal to 25 by 2 what's the value of g uh, h1 it is 25 by 2 into g so it is going to be 100 g by 2 minus 25 by 2 into g which is equal to 75 g by 2 this is h2 and this is equation 2 let me find out the last case now observe the last case what's the last case so distance traveled in next to 5 seconds that is going to be h3 now from the starting it is going to be h1 plus h2 plus h3 right if i consider h1 plus h2 plus h3 it is going to be how much time it is take it is going to take 15 seconds h1 plus h2 plus h3 if you consider this it is going to take 15 seconds let me substitute that s is equal to ut plus half a t square u2 is 0 then s is h1 plus h2 plus h3 which is equal to this is minus of because object is moving downward minus g by 2 into 15 square 15 square is 225 so minus minus will get cancelled h1 plus h2 plus h3 which is equal to 225 into g divided by 2 what's the value of h1 plus h2 this is where it is 100 g by 2 let me substitute this is 100 g by 2 plus h3 which is equal to 225 g by 2 then h3 is equal to send this right side it is going to be 125 g divided by 2 so this is equation 3 now let me relate all these three equations so what about h1 and h2 relation so just from equation 1 and 2 equation 1 and 2 if you observe equation 1 and 2 h1 we got it is as 25 by h1 is equal to 25 by 2 into g h2 it is 75 by 2 into g take the ratio g will get cancelled 2 will get cancelled 25 3 so 20, h1 by h3 sorry h2 is equal to 1 by 3 so can i write down h2 is equal to 3 times of h1 yes it is next what about h1 and h3 relation equation 1 and equation 3 h1 is 25 by 2 into g h3 is equal to 125 by 2 into g take a ratio it will get cancelled out 25 ones are 25 5s so h1 by h3 is equal to 1 by 5 then h3 is equal to 5 times of h1 so finally h1 is equal to h2 by 3 which is equal to h3 by 5 which option matches option d is correct this is how we have to answer so, so for explaining you only i took this much time so while you are substituting substitute as fast as possible then you will get the answer very quickly okay well very good look at question number 26 so what's the question they're asking okay a body is standing at the top of a tower of height 20 meters drops a stone 
assuming g is equal to 10 meter per second square the velocity with which it hits the ground super observe the terminology carefully question number 26 height of the tower is 20 meter okay a stone is dropped the meaning of stone is dropped is initial velocity is equal to zero acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square they are asking final velocity with which it is going to hit the ground okay so what is the initial velocity zero final velocity we need acceleration due to gravity we know that the height of the tower is also given so which equation is suitable p square is equal to u square plus 2as equation is suitable so initial velocity zero then v square is equal to 2 into minus 10 into minus 20 which is going to be v square is equal to 400 then v is equal to 20 meter per second this is the magnitude of velocity with which that object hits the ground guys look at this question it is looking somewhat interest a ball is dropped from a high rise platform at t is equal to 0 starting from rest okay so from a high rise flat platform they are dropping a ball okay super what is the initial velocity of this ball initial velocity is equal to 0 super if initial velocity is equal to 0 it is at t is equal to 0 after 6 seconds another ball is drawn sorry thrown downwards from the same platform with the speed v okay so by the sign uh, 6 seconds object may be traveled some distance right okay at this moment another object is dropped or sorry thrown with some speed v super the two balls will meet after 18 seconds what is the value of v super the two balls let's say they met at one time so by 18 seconds this object the first object travel this much distance that me let me consider this is as ball a and this is as ball b and after 18 seconds this ball is ball b is at the same position they meet in the sense they are at the same position two balls meet at t is equal to 18 seconds what is the value of v that's what we have to find out now the question is which one travel uh, for for the first particle what is the time taken by it is it going to be uh, 18 seconds or 12 seconds that's what we need so if you observe this particle a is dropped after tra uh, after six seconds so after six seconds only particle b is dropped the total time taken by a to reach uh, this position is going to be 18 seconds after six seconds ball b is dropped right so it is going to take only 12 seconds hope you understand the difference okay well. so this is going to be 12 seconds for the object which is at this position is going to be 16 seconds no 18 seconds try to understand the difference guys this is going to be 18 seconds object a after traveling some six seconds object b is dropped so this is dropped after six seconds so total time 18 seconds the remaining time is going to be 12 seconds Our ball b travels 12 seconds ball a travels 18 seconds <clears throat> that's the difference let's say they are at the same distance from the top of the tower right let me imagine the distance that means they are meeting right they are meeting in the sense they travel the same distance let me consider that distance as some variable you can imagine any variable let me imagine that is as s okay so they travel the s displacement from the top of the tower let me substitute one by one so first object is dropped s is equal to ut plus half a t square this is for ball a next ball 
b so for the first ball s is equal to uh, ut is equal to 0 then s is equal to 1 by 2 s is minus or plus, plus uh, minus a is minus g into t is going to be uh, do i have to consider 12 seconds or 18 seconds i should consider 18 seconds 18 square so g value substitute it is as 10 so finally s is equal to 5 into 18 square so whatever the answer we are going to get we have to substitute it here just keep it as it is let us see it after finding this so next ball b travels 12 seconds even though it is traveling 12 seconds distance of travel is going to be same only so the time is itself is different both are dropping one is dropping another one is being thrown from the same height and they are reaching to the same position only difference is time difference first after dropping first object after six seconds second object is dropped whatever the distance they are traveling that is going to be same only then s is equal to minus s is equal to s is equal to ut plus half t square equation let's see say same equation so they said this is they are draw, uh, throwing with a velocity v rate ball b so minus s which is equal to v into t that v is also negative or positive it is going to be negative because object is moving downward minus g by 2 into t square first of all try to understand the representation including sign then we'll can solve this numerically so minus 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 will get cancelled out s is equal to v into t how much time it is traveling 12 seconds minus g by 2 into 12 square so as s is the same for both of them you can equate equation 1 and equation 2 1 is equal to 2 as s is the same that means distance covered by that objects are same so 5 into 10 18 square is equal to v into 12 minus g by 12 18 square by g will be there 18 square into g by 2 is also there g by 2 so g by 2 into 12 square so from this 12 v is equal to 5 into 18 square g by 2 plus g by 2 into 12 square here it is plus right so just check it out plus so here it is going to become minus So I represented this minus no need to this is not this minus this 5 I have already represented that is as g by 2 so no need to write it down so here it is this will get cancelled out now what is the final answer 12v is equal to g by 2 comes outside they have already given g value that is going to be 10 so 10 by 2 into 18 square minus 12 square 12 square so 5 into 18 square is 324 minus 144 which is equal to 180 so 5 into 180 12 v then the here answer v is equal to 75 meter per second so this is the answer we are going to get next look at the question number 28 a particle starts its motion from rest 28 solution starts its motion from rest in the sense initial velocity is equal to 0 under action of a constant force that means f is equal to constant in the sense acceleration is also constant that's the meaning so, so it, it does means that we have to use kinematic equations just to represent that as kinematic equations are useful applicable only when acceleration is constant right just to 
and make you understand that they have given a point like this if the distance covered in first 10 seconds in first 10 seconds then s is equal to ut plus half a t square this is not motion under gravity numerical object is moving on a straight line so let's say object is initially at rest a constant force is applied then acceleration is present on that object if acceleration is present object will move forward in first 10 seconds it travels s1 distance in first 20 seconds it travels s2 distance they are asking relation between these two so this is in 10 seconds and this is in 20 seconds from the starting they are asking relation between s1 and s2 okay so s is equal to let's say s1 initial velocity is 0 you are going to get 1 by 2 into a into as uh, time is going to be 10 seconds right so it is going to be 10 square so s2 is equal to same formula so s is equal to ut plus half a t square initial velocity 0 then s2 is equal to 1 by 2 into a into t square it is going to be 20 square let us say 1 by s1 by s2 let's equation 1 equation 2. 1 divided by 2 which is equal to 1 by 2 a into 10 square divided by 1 by 2 a into 20 square 1 by 2 a will get cancelled 100 by 400 which is equal to 1 by 4 then s1 uh, or s2 is equal to 4 times of s1 is the answer which option matches option b matches correctly okay now look at the next question the question they are asking is a particle moves in a straight line with a constant acceleration okay super a is equal to constant that means we can apply kinematic equations that's the purpose of this point it changes its velocity from 10 meter per second to 20 meter per second while passing through a distance of 135 meter super initial velocity is going to be 10 meter per second final velocity is 20 meter per second so distance of separation is 135 meter okay then what's they're asking in time t seconds then the value of t they're asking okay super there by giving initial velocity and final velocity and distance of separation we can find out acceleration what's the formula for acceleration in terms of initial and final velocities v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s so v square is nothing but 20 square u square is 10 square plus 2 into a into s is 135 so it is 400 minus 100 which is equal to 2 into 135 2 into 135 it is going to be 270 into a then a is equal to 300 divided by 270 0 0 will get cancelled so it is going to be 3 tens are 3 9 which is equal to 10 by 9 this is the acceleration they are asking time so let's say you can use v is equal to u plus at equation final velocity is 20 initial velocity is 10 plus acceleration is 10 by 9 into t then 10 is equal to 10 by 9 into t and this 10 is second 10 meter per second into left side so 0 0 will get cancelled then t is equal to 9 seconds is the answer very good next step question number 30 so what is the question they're asking the distance traveled by a particle starting from rest and moving with an acceleration 4 by 3 meter per second square in the third second they are asking so what's the formula for uh, distance travel in nth second nth second is uh, u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1 they are given very clearly that object is initially at rest position that means initial velocity is equal to 0 it is moving with a constant acceleration that is 4 by 3 meter per second square they are asking distance covered in third second so this is the formula we have to use s is equal to u is 0 so then acceleration is 4 by 3 
into sorry four by three into one by two into two into time three minus one. So which is equal to four by six into two three is a six minus one. It is going to be five. Answer is going to be twenty by six. Twenty by six can be replaced as ten by three meters. So this is the answer. Question number thirty. Option A is correct. Very good. Next. Question number thirty one. Two bodies A and B of different masses are dropped from heights 16 meter and 25 meter respectively. The ratio of time taken by them to reach the ground. Super. They are dropped from different heights. Solution. So one is dropped from 16 meter. Another one is dropped from. Dropped in the sense initial velocity is equal to zero. So another one is dropped. Another one is also initial velocity is zero. So what is the total height of the first body? It is going to be. I mean, from what height it is dropped? It is from 16 meter. Another one is from 25 meter. Super. Ratio of the time taken by them. So K S is equal to U T plus half A T square is the formula that I have to use. Initial velocity of both the objects is zero, so I can write down S is equal to one by two a t square. Then S is minus S is as object is moving downward one by two into a. I have to represent in place of S. I can write down it is as minus h because in place of displacement curve, I am representing it height of the tower. Minus one by two into g into t square because uh, a is always minus c. It will get cancelled out. Acceleration due to gravity is going to be same for both the objects. So h is directly proportional to t square. Then the time taken ratio can be written as t one by t two whole square is equal to h one by h two. H one is sixteen divided by twenty five. Sixteen. Okay, so then T one by T two, T one by T two is equal to root of sixteen by twenty five, which is equal to four by five. So that's the answer. Option A is correct. Now look at the question number thirty two. I'll explain you this question in two different ways. They said a particle or a ball is thrown vertically upward with An initial velocity ten meter per second. Okay. When it has reached one half of its maximum height. Okay. Let us see. So total maximum height is going to be let's say it is h, but it reaches only half of the maximum. So that means it reaches only h by two. They have given this in question itself clearly. When it reaches maximum height, its final velocity is going to be zero. Try to understand, ma. When it has reached one half of its maximum height, okay. So that maximum height itself, we have to imagine how high does the ball rise. That they are asking h. Okay. So you can use v square is equal to u square plus two s. That formula may help us. Or Okay, let us see. V square is equal to u square plus two a s. Final velocity when it reaches maximum height is zero. Initial velocity with which you are throwing is ten square. A is minus g as s is plus only as it is moving upward. It reaches only h by two. So from this g value is ten meter per second square. So two two will get cancelled. You are going to get ten into h is equal to ten square. Then h is equal to ten meter. This is the maximum. Okay, keep it aside. 
look at the trick that I'm going to explain you whenever any object is thrown vertically upward with 10 meter per second what is the maximum height that it can reach uh, that means final velocity is equal to 0 uh, and it is going to be 5 meter right velocity is equal to 0 as acceleration due to gravity g is equal to 10 meter per second square which is acting in opposite direction to motion of the body within one second this object will comes to rest position then this one second distance we have to find out because velocity of the object will decreases by magnitude of acceleration for every one second so here it is s is equal to ut plus half a t square we can use this formula ut is equal to zero s is equal to h it, i took it is as plus h as object is moving upward so 1 by 2 into acceleration due to gravity is going to be 10 into t square what's the value of t square oh. t in, within one second so what is the height it, it can travel it can travel h is equal to 5 meters so this is the maximum height it can go if when you throw the object with the initial velocity 10 meter per second it reaches maximum height to 5 meter but they said this maximum height is half of the total maximum height of the object then it is going to be double of that it is going to be 10 meter that is the answer okay a man throws balls with the same speed vertically upwards one of the one after the other at an intervals of two seconds question number 33 okay one after the other at an intervals of two seconds what would be the speed of throw so that more than two balls are in the sky at any time super 33 question number try to understand guys if i throw any object with a velocity 9 meter per second within one second acceleration due to gravity is also given that is just 9.8 meter per second square that means after one second object will velocity is going to become zero so if i throw the next object within the with the same velocity one after the other i'm throwing right so after one second i'll throw one more object so by the time this object come down this object will be at a maximum height are you getting what I am saying? Try to understand. First object I have thrown with 9.8 meter per second. It takes, it travels maximum height or it will come maximum high velocity is going to be zero within one second because acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square. So after uh, throwing the first ball, second ball is thrown immediately. So by the time this object comes back, first ball comes down, second ball will go to maximum. These two are not in the space at the same time if I throw the object with 9.8 meter per second. Do I have to throw the object with the same 9.8 meter per second or more than that? I should throw with more than that. That more than that is going to be the option which is matches 19.6 then only those two objects are in air 19.6 meter per second so after one second its velocity is going to be 9.8 meter per second after one more second its velocity is going to be zero that means by the time this object reaches maximum height it will take two seconds within two seconds we can we can throw one more object so that both the objects will be in air so which option is going to be correct option a is correct next if a ball is thrown vertically upward with, an, with initial speed u, the distance covered during the last second of its ascent is. Okay, look at this. Question number 34. Solution. The particle is thrown with an initial speed u. The distance covered during the last t seconds they are asking. Last t seconds. Okay. Let us say it travels a maximum this height of let's say x and the time taken to travel it is going to be t. Time taken to travel to reach maximum height is going to be t. Let me find out that.
s is equal to you can s is equal to ut plus half a t square you can use that formula s is going to be x here initial velocity with which you are throwing is u total time is going to be capital t a is minus g 1 by 2 g t square they are asking distance covered by the object in last t seconds let's say this is the last t seconds if this is the t seconds what is going to be the remaining time remaining time is going to be t minus t seconds right then this it is going to travel some distance in this duration let me consider the distance as y then y is equal to u into t minus t seconds minus 1 by 2 into g into t minus t seconds square let's say this is equation 1 and equation 2 now i need a distance to travel in last one second to get distance traveled in last one second let's say this is going to be h to get the answer then what should i have to do h is equal to x minus y right and try to understand so h is equal to x is u t minus 1 by 2 into g into t square minus u into t minus t minus 1 by 2 t minus t whole square into g so if you solve this equation we are going to get the answer h is equal to 1 by 2 g t square so you have to eliminate whatever the possible values that can be eliminated and then one more thing you have to understand how much what is the time taken by it to reach maximum height initial velocity is u final velocity is 0 distance traveled is x and you can find out this by using v is equal to u plus at formula v is equal to u plus at final velocity is 0 initial velocity u minus g into t so from this t is equal to u by g so this is the time taken you can substitute in this equation it will help you to reach to this final answer let me explain you question number 35 okay a particle is thrown vertically upward okay and they haven't mentioned initial velocity let me assume that initial velocity is u when it reaches maximum height its final velocity is going to be zero let's say so that height maximum height they haven't mentioned let me assume that is as h itself okay then so try to find out relation between here between them here v square is equal to u square plus 2a s final velocity of the object is 0 initial velocity is u square minus 2 g h already you know the procedure a is replaced with minus g s is positive only because it is moving upward which is moving upward particle is moving upward from this i can write down u square is equal to 2 g h let's keep this relation as it is then it may be helpful to us next this is not the data they need the thing is they have given its velocity here it is its velocity at half of the height is 10 meter per second okay so maximum height is h initial velocity is u half of the height velocity is 10 meter per second half of the height is in the sense it is going to be h by 2 okay let me try to relate this equation v square is equal to u square plus 2as again v square is 10 square u square is u square itself this is not 4 don't say this is 4 it is u only minus 2g what is the height it is reaching h by 2 super then from this it is going to be 100 is equal to u square minus 2 2 will get cancelled g into h what is the question they are asking 
are asking maximum height attained by that okay so from this we know that u square is equal to 2gh then 100 is equal to 2gh minus gh so 2gh minus gh is equal to g into h g value is 10 it is given in the question itself so 100 is equal to 10 into h then h is equal to 10 meter is the height of the sorry maximum height attained by it which option is matching option c is correct very good let's get into next question 36 solution a car is moving with a speed of 40 km per hour can be stopped by applying a brakes after at least 2 meter ok super a car is initially moving with a velocity 40 km per hour after applying brake it came to rest position so finally it is at rest position so that's the meaning so it is at rest rest in the sense final velocity is equal to 0 right okay so formula v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s final velocity is 0 initial velocity is do one thing let me relate only equation of velocity u square as always is negative or positive so it is a deceleration that's why object is going to come to rest position 2 into minus a into s s is the displacement covered so it is 2 a s is equal to u square then from this we can relate u square proportional to s here if you apply brakes then a is going to be constant because vehicle is same if the same car is moving with the speed okay if the same car is moving with the speed 80 km per hour what is the minimum stopping distance that's what they're asking so you need relation between uh, the velocity with which it is moving and the stopping distance which is given here so i can write down write it down it is as s2 by s1 is equal to u1 by u2 whole square s2 by s1 is equal to u1 value is equal to initially travel 2 meter oh, sorry 40 kilometer per hour initial speed 40 kilometer per hour next it is of 80 kilometer per hour whole square 41s are 42s are then s2 by s1 is equal to 1 by 4 okay so there is a small representation mistake here that is s2 s1 we are writing direct relation right then it should be s1 s2 s1 s2 s1 s2 now i need s2 s2 is equal to 4 times of s1 4 into s1 is 2 meter so s2 is equal to 8 meter this is the answer so which option option c is matching very good next question number 37 if a car at rest accelerates uniformly to a speed of 144 km per hour in 20 seconds okay initially it is at rest position initial velocity is equal to 0 within 10 seconds its velocity is going to be sorry within 20 seconds time taken is equal to 20 seconds within this time velocity is reached to 144 km per hour kilometer per hour so we have to convert this to kilometer per hour into meter per second so 144 into 5 by 18 18 8 zero can be 144 which is equal to 8 phi 
40 meter per second this is the way to convert kilometer per hour into meter per second very good within 20 second object velocity is 40 meter per second now what's the question they're asking they're asking it covers a distance of super then s is equal to ut plus half at square is this formula initial velocity and is equal to zero so one by two did they give acceleration no they didn't give acceleration this is formula is not applicable first of all let me find out acceleration acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time final velocity is 40 initial velocity is 0 divided by time taken is 20 seconds so acceleration is equal to 2 meter per second square then s is equal to initial velocity is equal to 0 1 by 2 into a uh, is 2 into t square time taken to travel it is 20 square so 2 2 will get cancelled out answer is going to be s is equal to 400 meter very good next look at the question number 38 and try to solve it by pausing this the body dropped from a height h with an initial velocity 0 strikes the ground with a velocity 3 meter per second super what is the height of this height is h it is just dropped u is equal to 0 what is the velocity with which it is hitting with 3 meter per second okay so with the help of given data actually this object is uh, it's a motion under gravity question right as it is a motion under gravity question you can you can use equations of motion at the same time you have to follow those reference directions so s is equal to ut plus half at square is object is moving downward or upward it is moving downward initial velocity is equal to zero as it is moving downward which is going to be taken as negative or positive it must be taken as a negative minus h a is minus g 1 by 2 into minus g into t square okay so minus minus will get cancelled from this uh, h is equal to 1 by 2 into g t square okay so this is the formula with respect to two time okay they gave final velocity information right we can use v square is equal to u square plus 2 as equation that is v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s final velocity they've already given that is 3 square it is going to be 9 which is equal to u square is 0 next it is going to be 2 a is minus g s is minus h then 9 is equal to 2 g h okay one more thing next another body of same mass dropped from the same height h with an initial velocity 4 meter per second okay so another object is dropped from a same height h but it is thrown vertically down with a velocity 4 meter per second now the question they are asking is what is the velocity with which it is going to hit the ground this is what i have to find out okay we can use v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s equation v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s i have to find out final velocity what's the initial velocity with which it is being hit it is 4 meter per second it is going to be 4 square plus 2 into a is going to be minus g s is minus h okay then v is equal to root of 4 square plus 2 g h i already know the value of 2 g h what's the value of 2 g h 2 g h is equal to 9 right let me substitute that v is equal to root of 4 square is 16 2 g h is 9 
नाइन प्लस सिक्सटीन इज ट्वेंटी फाइव रूट ट्वेंटी फाइव इज फाइव दिस इज द स्पीड विथ विच इट इज गोइंग टू हिट द ग्राउंड सुपर विच ऑप्शन इज मैचिंग हियर ऑप्शन ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर नाउ लुक एट दिस एन इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम ए वैट वाटर टैप सॉरी the water drops falls at regular intervals from a tap 5 meters above the ground okay tap height is going to be 5 meters from the ground okay the third drop is leaving the tap at instant first drop touches the ground so each and every drop is falling at a regular intervals okay when third drop is hitting the ground first drop is leaving the tap this is the meaning of it okay super so it it means how many drops are released by this time so there there are three drops so that this is the third drop and this is the first drop time interval between all these drops is going to be same they are falling at a regular intervals so what is the total time taken by the third drop to reach ground here it is going to be 2 times of t use s is equal to ut plus half t square they are dropping right so initial velocity is equal to 0 we can use s is equal to ut plus half at square this is for third drop then s is equal to minus 5 meter which is equal initial velocity 0 did they give acceleration due to gravity no they haven't you can imagine that is as 10 it is going to be 10 by 2 into t square it is minus a is equal to minus 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 will get cancel to tens so t square is equal to 1 then t is equal to 1 so it means time interval between each and every drop is going to be 1 second okay now what's the question they're asking how far above the ground is the second drop at that how far above the ground is the second drop at that instant they are asking second drop height from the ground okay so second drop so let's say this is second drop is at some height h that's what we have to find out so whatever the t value i have imagined here while i'm substituting it is actually 2t so that's what i've directly substituted right check out this guys so this value is 2t it means 2t square so 2t is equal to 1 then t is equal to 1 by 2 second which is equal to 0.5 second observe carefully so while i'm substituting in this equation in place of small t do i have to substitute 2t or only t 2t i have to substitute because third drop is taking 2t time from the tap okay so time taken by the drop so for every 0.5 second one drop is being released from the tap that is the mean okay first of all find out uh, second drop distance travel in 0.5 second so s is equal to ut plus half at square initial velocity is 0 then s is equal to 1 by 2 into a is you can take 10 t square 0.5 second square that is going to be 1 by 4 0.5 can be written as 1 by 2 1 by 2 square is going to be 1 by 4 so it can be written as 2 phi 5 by 4 is the distance travel by the second drop this is from the tap but we need second drop height h then h is equal to 5 minus s then 5 minus s is 5 by 4 so this one can be written as it's actually 5 minus 1.25 
the remaining height h is equal to 3.75 meter this is the height of the second drop from the bottom super question number 40 a car accelerates from rest at a constant rate of alpha okay 40 solution they are given like this assume a car accelerates at a constant rate of alpha from rest that means initial velocity is equal to zero for some time after which it decelerate so let's say t one time it will accelerate after that it will decelerate decelerate with beta beta is deceleration it is in opposite direction so at this moment it will be having some velocity so from that its velocity reduces to zero by the time t1 it gains some velocity v right so from that velocity it is going to reduce to zero so let's say it is going to be t2 time remaining time so final velocity is going to be zero so total time taken by this vehicle is going to be t now the question we have to find out maximum velocity try to understand guys whenever you are accelerating your vehicle first it will reach us to some velocity after that if you want to reduce from that maximum velocity this object is going to come to rest position that means i have to find out v let us see how we are going to find it out so first of all let me calculate this final velocity did they give any information any other information no so they are asking only uh, maximum velocity acquired by the car will be let's say in t1 time object is traveling with an initial velocity so initial velocity is zero so v is equal to u plus a t v is equal to initial velocity is equal to zero a is alpha into t1 okay from this what about t1 t1 is equal to v by alpha super next v is equal to u plus a t use the same formula final velocity is zero initial velocity is v second case minus a in place of a we have to write down minus beta because that is a deceleration okay into t2 so from this what is t2 t2 is equal to v by beta one more thing we know that uh, total time t is equal to t1 plus t2 so what's the value of t1 t1 is v by alpha t2 is v by beta so from this it can write down v common alpha plus beta divided by alpha beta then v is equal to alpha beta into t divided by alpha plus beta this is the answer which option matches option d super next question number 41 velocity of a train increases uniformly from okay a train velocity is increases from 20 km per hour to 60 km per hour within 4 hours The distance travelled by the train during this period. So they are asking distance travelled by this train during this period. For that I should know what is the value of acceleration. Then only it is possible. Okay. Let's say V square is equal to U square plus 2AS. Let me find out acceleration with the help of this. V square is equal to. Either you can use this equation. Otherwise you can use one more equation. We know initial velocity, final velocity and time taken. Then we can find out acceleration easily. That is final minus initial velocity divided by time, right? Final velocity is 60. Initial velocity is 20 divided by 4, which is equal to 40 by 4, which is equal to 10 kilometer per hour square. So that is how they have given relation. Then then we need a distance s is equal to ut plus half a t square u is 20 into 
time of travel is 4 plus 1 by 2 acceleration is 10 into 4 square 16 2 5 20 into 4 it is going to be 80 plus 80 which is equal to 160 kilometer this is the answer option a matches perfectly next question number 42 the body starts from rest what is the ratio of distance traveled by the body during fourth and third second body starts from rest in the sense u is equal to zero as the lesson is same for both of them s is equal to u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1 we have this equation u is equal to 0 this is distance traveled by the object in nth second they are asking the ratio of fourth and third s4 is equal to otherwise you can write down it is like s n is directly proportional to 2n minus 1 they are asking fourth to third ratio which is equal to 2 into 4 minus 1 divided by 2 into 3 minus 1 which is equal to 8 minus 1 7 divided by 6 minus 1 5 7 is 2 5 is the answer option a is correct very good next 43 a body dropped from top of the tower fall through 40 meter during the last two seconds okay a body is dropped u is equal to zero It falls through a 40 meter during last two seconds. We'll say this duration is last last two seconds duration. So what is the distance it is covering? 40 meter. Okay. The height of the tower they are asking. Super. The trick that I have already explained in the beginning of kinematic equations that whenever any object is dropped, its initial velocity is equal to 0, acceleration due to gravity g is equal to 10 meter per second square. You can check out the example that I have given. Distance travelled in first one second is 5 meter. Next one second it is increases by acceleration due to gravity that is by 10, it is going to be 15 meter next it is going to be 25 meter if you observe this you can directly think like this so let's say this is the two seconds duration if you add these two only i am going to get 40 meter sir why can't i take next one second yes you can take next one second also if you take next one second so what is the distance travel you are going to get 35 meter is it possible to get 40 meter by adding 25 and 35 no it is not as you move, you are moving down, the distance covered by the object in each one second is goes on increasing. So the last two seconds distance travelled is 15 meter and 20 meter, which is equal to 40 meter. Then what is the total height of this tower? It is going to be 45 meter. That's the answer. This is the trick uh, you can use. So this is the easiest way to answer the question. You just go through the reference directions and I have ex explained one example with the help of that example you can understand this imagine once again you can understand it very clearly okay well, 44 solution what will be the ratio of distance moved by a freely falling body from the rest in fourth and fifth seconds of its journey just now I have explained question number 42 and 44 are of same model Yes, n is equal to u plus uh, a by 2 into 2n minus 1. Here initial velocity is 0. So, s n is directly proportional to a by 2 into 2n minus 1. Yes, in fourth second, s in fifth second is equal to 2, 4. 2 into 4 minus 1 divided by 2 into 5 minus 1 which is equal to 8 minus 1 7 10 minus 1 9 i think option b is correct yes it is next a car is moving along a straight road with a uniform acceleration it passes through two points p and q 
separated by a distance with a velocity 30 km per hour and 40 km per hour respectively the velocity of the car may vary between okay so a car is moving along a straight straight road with a uniform acceleration that means velocity so the acceleration is going to be constant okay let us say this is position p and this is position q okay object is moving with uniform acceleration acceleration is constant that means you can apply equations of motion just to define you that they have given us okay it passes through p and q with a different velocities one is with 30 km per hour okay so this one with 40 km per hour okay they are asking velocity midway between the particle okay so this is where they are asking velocity let's say this distance of separation is d by 2 and this is of d by 2 i did assume the total distance as d that is the reason i did represented half of the distance as d by 2 so let's say acceleration is equal to v square minus u square by 2s right which is equal to final velocity is going to be 40 square minus initial velocity 30 square divided by 2s 40 square is 1600 minus 30 square is it is going to be 900 divided by 2s then acceleration is equal to 700 by 2s which is equal to 350 by s okay now acceleration i came to know acceleration now i have to find out velocity in this particular region this region i need velocity okay so use v square is equal to u square plus 2a is formula again v square is equal to u square is 30 square acceleration is constant they have already given so that is 2 into a a is 350 by s into distance of separation is uh, what's the value i took this is d right so total distance of separation is d so i took it is as d so you are going to get d by 2 d by 2 d by 2 will get cancelled 2 2 will get cancelled 30 square is going to be 900 plus 350 this is v square then v is equal to root of 900 plus 350 it is going to be 1250 so we can replace this is as root of 125 into 10 we can write down this is as 25 into 50 otherwise 25 into 25 into 2 we can write down so 125 comes outside so you can write down this as 25 into 25 into 2 so final it is 25 root 2 kilometer per hour this is the way to answer okay next next concept is relative velocity Question number 46 Solution Look at this Preeti reached the metro station and found that escalator was not working Okay So let's say This is escalator She uh, came to know that it is not working She walked up the stationary escalator in time T1 Okay So let us say uh, total distance of this escalator is D and she walked up in so she she walked up in t1 seconds okay so they've already given in t1 time that means so whatever they haven't mentioned about uh, velocity of the preeti so velocity of preeti is going to be distance by time t1 where it next on the other days if she remains stationary on the moving escalator then the escalator takes her up in time t2 okay another days remaining days other days 
escalator is working if she just stand still on this escalator so it takes her up in time t2 so distance of travel is going to be same but time taken is different so whose velocity is going to be is this so escalator velocity because c is at rest position right so this is escalator velocity that escalator velocity i am representing with t then ve is equal to d by t2 okay now what's they are saying if sorry the time taken by her to walk up on the moving escalator will be very good so when on the other days if both uh, she is walking at the same time escalator is also working then we have to find out total velocity total velocity is going to be velocity velocity of the preeti plus velocity of escalator right it is going to be d by t1 plus d by t2 so from this v is equal to d into t1 plus t2 by t1 t2 right okay now this is the velocity they are asking time taken how much time it will take time is going distance is going to be same right so time taken is equal to distance by velocity this is the new velocity when preeti is walking at the same time escalator is also moving so d by d into t1 plus t2 divided by t1 t2 t will get cancel out you are going to get t1 t2 by t1 plus t2 very good which option matches t1 t2 by t1 plus t2 option b next 47 a bus is moving with a speed of 10 meter per second on a straight road okay with 10 meter per second next a scooterist wishes to overtake the bus in 100 seconds okay so there is a person who is a scooterist so he is trying to overtake the bus in within time time is equal to uh, 100 second within 100 seconds he would like to overtake so distance of separation between the scooter and the bus is 1 km we don't know the speed of the scooter that's what we have to find out so what is the uh, with what speed should the scooter is to chase the bus so that he can cross this bus within 100 seconds okay we have to find out relative velocity so velocity of a scooter is with respect to by bus we need so velocity of the scooter is i am assuming it is as v minus velocity of the bus this is the formula velocity of a with respect to b is equal to a with respect to ground minus b with respect to ground is the formula so v a b is equal to sorry try to remember this formula so it is v minus 10 meter per second so this is the velocity of the scooter with respect to bus who is uh, at rest position who is under motion with respect to relative terminology scooter is in motion uh, we are finding velocity of sorry bus is at rest we are finding velocity of scooter so bus is at rest so we are finding scooter velocity okay va well, that is the meaning of relative velocity now let me draw the relative diagram is in relative diagram so who is at rest so bus is at rest position so the scooter is moving with the velocity of v minus 10 so now bus is at rest position try to understand this is in relative terminology so whenever you are drawing a relative terminology an object must be at rest with respect to the other that's the advantage of relative terminology okay so what is the distance of separation it is going to be 1 km time taken to cross this 100 second very good now velocity is equal to formula distance by time so the thing they have to find out is velocity so velocity is v minus 10 which is equal to distance is 1000 divided by 100 will get cancel out which is equal to 10 then v is equal to 20 meter per second so scooterist should chase the bus with a velocity 
20 meter per second then only it is possible for him to cross the bus within 100 second very good next question number 48 a train of 150 meter long okay so 150 meter long going towards train of 150 meter long going towards north direction at a speed of 10 meter per second let me assume this is as north direction it is moving with 10 meter per second this is north okay a parrot flies at the speed of 5 meter per second towards the south direction so if it is not this is how south so parrot is moving with a speed of 5 meter per second towards south direction okay next so parallel to the railway track okay the time taken by the parrot to cross the train super i need velocity of the parrot with respect to the train velocity of the parrot with respect to ground minus velocity of the train with respect to ground parrot with respect to ground it is moving towards left let me imagine that is as positive left side positive right side negative that's my wish i can imagine as i wish so let's say this is 5 right side is negative already one minus is there you are going to get minus uh, 10 total it is going to be 15 meter per second when two objects are moving in opposite directions with different velocities then total velocity will get added up that is going to be here 10 15 meter per second so the time taken here it is going to be time is equal to distance by velocity distance is going to be 150 meter and the velocity is 15 meter per second which is equal to 10 seconds so whenever you are writing relative velocity who is at rest position and who is under motion we are finding velocity of the parrot with respect to train train is observer that means train is at rest in relative diagram in relative terminology so we are finding parrot velocity so which is equal to 15 meter per second and time taken to cross it is within 10 seconds so super next look at these questions uh, question number 49 recent year questions a car starts from rest and accelerates at 5 meter per second square okay observe carefully starts from rest in the sense initial velocity is equal to zero okay so acceleration 5 meter per second square at t is equal to 4 seconds a ball is dropped out of the window okay so it traveled 4 seconds if it travel 4 seconds what is going to be velocity of the car after 4 seconds acceleration is 5 meter per second square so what's the velocity of the car after 4 second v is equal to u plus at initial velocity is equal to 0 acceleration is 5 time of 4 seconds 20 meter per second this is the velocity of the car after 4 second okay super next what's the question they're asking a ball is dropped out of the win out of a window by a person sitting inside a car okay super a ball is dropped okay out of the window of a car by the person who is sitting inside the car okay what is the velocity and acceleration of the ball at t is equal to 6 seconds okay so whenever a ball is dropped dropped ball is dropped from moving car then velocity of that ball is going to be same as that particular vehicle at that point of time which is going to be 20 meter per second so it is like a horizontal projectile motion so vertical initial velocity is going to be zero horizontal initial velocity is going to be 20 meter per second it's like a horizontal projectile motion what's the question they're asking what 
is the velocity and acceleration of the ball at t is equal to 6 seconds okay now we have to find out velocity horizontal velocity and vertical velocity differently so horizontal acceleration is equal to 0 when object is under motion horizontal acceleration is 0 in horizontal projectile motion vertical acceleration is which is equal to acceleration due to gravity so as horizontal acceleration is 0 velocity is constant velocity of the object is going to be constant so vertical velocity we have to find out horizontal velocity constant which is equal to 20 meter per second at any time it doesn't change vertical velocity vy is equal to uy plus ay into t initial vertical velocity is 0 ay is minus 10 time after which they are asking is 6 seconds or 2 seconds at 6 seconds they are asking that means what is the remaining time so from starting it is 6 seconds in the sense after 4 seconds the object is uh, released that means remaining 2 seconds will be there so it is going to be 2 seconds which is equal to minus 20 meter per second so that means after 2 seconds of uh, dropping the ball from the car so it is going to undergo this kind of motion velocity after 2 seconds it is going to be 20 meter per second horizontal velocity 20 meter per second vertical velocity the moment that it is being thrown is also 20 meter per second this is dropping time so at the point from the car so this is velocity after 2 seconds then magnitude is going to be root of 20 square plus 20 square which is equal to 20 root 2 meter per second next thing what they are asking acceleration of the ball at t is equal to 6 seconds see acceleration is not going to change so acceleration horizontal acceleration is equal to 0 vertical acceleration is minus g net acceleration is equal to root of a x square plus a y square which is equal to root of 0 square plus minus g square which is equal to g only so which is equal to 10 meter per second which option matches option d matches perfectly okay so try to understand and go through it once again a small block slides down on a smooth inclined plane starting from rest okay question number 50 So as it is smooth inclined plane there is no frictional force okay what is the question they are asking the question they are asking is um, starting from rest okay initial velocity is equal to zero try to understand each and every point at is equal to 0. S and B the distance travelled by the block in the interval of T is equal to N minus 1 to N then the ratio Sn by Sn plus 1 is okay super then what's the formula for a distance travelled by the object in n seconds nth second Sn is equal to U plus A by 2 into 2n minus 1 right actually it should be theta so acceleration which is responsible for displacement of the object on the inclined plane is going to be g sin theta that is an inclined surface when loss of motion chapter comes you will get that complete clarity so i'll explain that chapter also first of all try to understand what is the initial velocity s n is equal to initial velocity is 0 then s n is equal to a by 2 into 2 n minus 1 okay this is distance traveled by the object in n seconds what about s distance traveled in n plus 1 seconds it is going to be u plus a by 2 into 2 n minus 1 in place of n you have to substitute n plus 1 so u is equal to 0 because it is released on the inclined plane a by 2 into 2 times of n plus 1 minus 1 v a by 2 into 2 n plus 2 minus 1 which is equal to a by 2 into 2 n plus 1 this is distance traveled in 
n plus 1 tan okay now what's the thing they're asking they're asking ratio of sn by sn plus 1 which is equal to sn is a by 2 into 2n minus 1 divided by a by 2 into 2n plus 1 a by 2 will get cancelled you are going to get 2n minus 1 divided by 2n plus 1 which option matches question number 50 2n minus 1 by 2n plus 1 option b very good next look at the question number 51 in 51 they have given two two graphs straight lines the question the displacement time graphs of two moving particles makes an angle 30 30 degrees and 45 degrees so one is 30 degrees another one is 45 degrees so first to 30 degrees then 40 de 45 degrees okay let's say this is one and this is two position versus time displacement versus time graph is given okay let's say this is x versus t the ratio of their respective velocities they're asking ratios of velocity velocity is nothing but dx by dt dx by dt is nothing but slope slope is nothing but tan theta then position versus time graph is given finding velocity is nothing but finding slope of the given graph so v1 by v2 is equal to tan theta 1 divided by tan theta 2 which is equal to tan 30 is the first angle divided by tan 45 so tan 45 is going to be 1 tan 30 is equal to 1 by root 3 so answer is going to be 1 is 2 root 3 is the answer so which option option 4 very good next question number 52 solution the ratio of distance traveled by the freely falling body in the first second and fourth second so just now i have uh, already given this so very easy easy point object is dropped from a certain height it's a freely falling body initial velocity is equal to zero acceleration due to gravity is downward let us say it is going to be i am assuming it is as 10 meter per second square or 9.8 doesn't matter so distance traveled by the object in the first one second is 5 meter already explained next one second it is going to be 15 meter next one second it is going to be 25 meter next one second it is going to be 35 meter so th this is in first second 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 third second and fourth second so they are asking distance ratio that is 5 is to 15 is to 25 is to 35 which is equal to 1 is to 3 is to 5 is to 7 so this is the trick i have given at the time of uh, giving explanation for kinematic equation you just go through that point if you are unable to understand we know that procedure for sn distance traveled in nth second that is sn is equal to u plus a by 2 into 2n minus 1 you can use that procedure u is equal to 0 sn is equal to a by 2 into 2n minus 1 as a is the same for all of them you can you, you can write down the formula like this 2 into sorry in first second i'm writing the ratio directly so s1 is to s2 is to s3 is to s4 s1 is a by 2 a by 2 is nothing but g by 2 into 2 into 1 minus 1 is to g by 2 into 2 into 2 minus 1 is to g by 2 into 2 into 3 minus 1 is to g by 2 into 2 into 4 minus 1 g by 2 will get cancelled in all the cases this is going to be 1 is to 3 is to 5 is to 7 that's all this is how we have to solve numericals based on motion in a straight line thank you so much for uh, seeing this video patiently and it will definitely boost your knowledge and thank you so much have a nice day guys